Grog4 just came out a few days ago, and it is already the best AI model we have ever seen. In the live stream, they showed how it's breaking all the benchmarks and is way ahead of the competition in pretty much every possible way. In this video, I'm gonna demo not only some of the examples that I've done with Grog4 to show how powerful it is, but also some of the work that other people are doing on Grog4 right now. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this, let's jump right in. So let's start with a really simple example here. I built a Flappy Bird game using Grog4. Uh, I basically just came in, I asked for a Flappy Bird game. It took a few iterations to get this right, um, but it did eventually give me the game. I would say this probably took me about 20 minutes. I asked it to build me a Flappy Bird game. I then asked it for better graphics, better game dynamics, uh, but essentially it built the game in one shot and then I just asked it to keep making it better and better with better graphics. Again, probably took me about 20 minutes, uh, all vibe coded here. I didn't touch the code, obviously. Um, and I just, I'm running it, it's a Python file, so I'm running it directly in, um, in, in Trinket here. So this is like a, a PY game Trinket because it's using PY game. So let's run the game real quick. I'll show you how it works. So uh, you can do easy, medium, hard. So let's do easy. We get a three, two, one countdown. And then uh, I'm just using my space bar here to flap our little flappy bird. So you can see I died. Let's do medium now. Let's try this, see how much harder that is. So you can see it goes a little faster. The uh, tubes are a little smaller. And if I do hard, it's gonna be uh, even faster and the tube space will be even smaller. So um, yeah, you can see it's pretty hard. Uh, so not something you could easily do yourself for sure. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, again, I was able to do this pretty easily. It took me about 20 minutes directly in the console. So that's pretty good. Um, I then decided to run an example of a uh, business breakdown. So I said, uh, is an ice machine business viable? This is a conversation I was having with somebody recently. They wanted to start this business. So I thought, uh, let's run it through Grok. Let's see if it's viable. And I thought it did a really good job. Uh, it broke down um, whether it's viable and profitable. It's saying that real world operators can earn two to $5,000 a month in net profit per machine after setup with gross margins as high as 98%, costing 0.07 dollars to produce 10 pounds of ice sold for two to three dollars that's pretty cool um, they actually show some breakdowns here from websites that they went and crawled to get this data um, they're also mentioning data from reddit uh, and also from a, an x account so pretty cool to see how um, they're getting data not only uh, from their ai but also looking out you know looking to reddit looking to x to get data uh, looking to websites crawling the web so i think that comprehensive package that x has that they can actually search x for this data along with the internet, I think is really, really powerful for them and a huge advantage that they have. Um, so yeah, so let's look at the breakdown. Uh, so in a low scenario with 100 bags sold, we make about 7,500 bucks with an annual revenue of 90,000, a uh, high revenue of 22,000 a month, 270,000. It's a pretty good little business, honestly, for a lot of people to start. Um, and they break down how it would work, net projections, net profit, actual profit, ROI, um, how to start this, do some market research, choose the right equipment, um, install and launch them, risks and considerations, location dependency, seasonality, tips for success. Uh, so really, really good breakdown. Uh, focus on captive markets, build relationships with prime locations, consult re free resources or courses on operators, learning how to do this. How passive is it? Relatively passive, but not fully passive, right? So it's giving this whole breakdown. So I thought it actually did a very, very good job. Um, so from this perspective, pretty impressive. Now, the other thing I had it do uh, for a test is I used it in Cursor. So I've made a ton of videos on Cursor. Um, if you haven't seen those, go check them out on the channel. Uh, I'll definitely be making more in Cursor. I love Cursor. I still use it over Claude Code and everything else. Um, I know people talk about those a lot. I still think Cursor is number one for my workflow at least. So you can see that they added the model here, Grok4. So I just checked that. Um, I'm not even using my API from Grok. I have a Grok API, but I'm just using the built-in one from my pro plan here. It's 20 bucks a month. They get you a bunch of tool calls from there. Um, and basically I just asked it to build me a landing page um, for an AI gaming uh, startup. And it went ahead and did that for me. And it's a pretty good landing page. Uh, it's got a really cool graphic in the background here. Uh, it's a little too animated for my taste. Maybe we'd uh, remove some of these buttons and things, uh, but pretty cool. I mean, pretty smart little landing page. It was able to build for me here. Um, you know, not out of this world by any means, but a, but a very solid landing page that it built pretty much, I think in one or two shots directly from Cursor. So I really like how it works within Cursor. 
Um, I really like the code it's producing. Uh, Python code, JavaScript code is all pretty good. And I like, I like the logic that it's doing as well. So overall, very, very good model. So let's look at some of the stuff that other people are doing with it outside of my tests. So we have the hexagon ball physics test, the classic test here pinned against O3. Um, you can see Grok on the left doing a good job and the O3 model kind of failing here. Um, so this is kind of an interesting test, uh, not definitive by any measure, but pretty cool. So here's some of the benchmarks that you can see that it's absolutely crushing in. Uh, AIME 25, absolutely crushing way ahead. Uh, Grok Heavy is doing way better here. Uh, I'll talk about Grok Heavy in a second. Arc AGI, absolutely stunning results there. Humanity's last exam, huge improvements there from other models. So here's Not something really cool. This guy, Danny Limoncetta, yeah. by far the best vibe coding uh, game guy I've found on X. He makes incredible games. You gotta follow him if you're into that. You know, awesome, awesome game developer, Danny. Um, so check out this game he built. This is actually from the Grok um, live stream. Check out this game uh, that he built here uh, in about four hours. Uh, using Grok 4. This is a first-person shooter. Let's watch this clip together. Uh, so this was actually just made first-person shooting game in a span of four hours. Uh, so uh, some of the actually the unappreciated hardest problem of making video games is not necessarily encoding the core logic of the game, but actually go out, source all the assets, all the textures of files, and, and uh, you know, to create a, a visually appealing game. So one of the core cool aspects Grok4 does really well with all the tools out there is actually able to automate these like asset sourcing uh, capabilities. So the developers you can just focus on the core development itself rather than like you know. So now you can run a you know entire game studios with game of one uh, with uh, per, like one person. So so really cool. What he's explaining here is that Grok4 uh, is very good at sourcing game materials, right? So skins. Um, you know, different image files, 3D files, things like that. It's really good at sourcing these files, which I actually found to be true. When I created this Flappy Bird game, obviously it's just Flappy Bird, it's nothing crazy. Um, but when I asked it to find different textures for the bird, for the pipes, for the background, all that kind of stuff, it did a very good job of sourcing all this stuff. Like this background, um, the bird itself, I thought it did a very, very good job. The, t the pipes here, the tubes, whatever you want to call them, I thought it did a very good job at sourcing all this stuff. So. Definitely, um, he's right about that. And you can see being able to build this whole 3D game, um, you know, first person shooter, not an easy task. And to do that in four hours is very, very impressive. And I think they really want to position themselves as a game engine as well. Um, so this is kind of an interesting little uh, example here. So this is um, a voice mode that they did, uh, comparing it to GPT. I, I personally think it's a little bit unfair, but we'll watch this together as well. Hey, I'm gonna say a number, and can you say the same number back to me, one? Got it. This is like a fun little game of Echo. <laughs> What's next? Two. Sorry, I said two. Uh, Three. I did. Three. <laughs> Four. Nice and steady. What's next? Uh, uh, five. Five. Nailed it. This is pretty fun, actually. Feel free to keep going or switch it up if you'd like. So you can see he's kind of trying to like interrupt it a little bit there and he's getting a not great results. So let's let's watch them do Grok now. Hey Grok. Hey Grok. Hello there. How can I help you today? We're going to do a little test. Can you repeat after me? One. One. All right. What's next? Two. Two. What's on your mind? Three. Three. Need anything else? Four. Four. How can I assist you? Five. So you can see the whole point here is that it's responding better, it's responding faster, and it seems to understand the task a little bit better here. Um, it's funny to watch this video and these guys are under like a ton of pressure while Elon's like <laughs> watching them, like, you know, don't don't mess this up. It's kind of funny. But um, you can see that that it does a pretty good job um, of that. And I think, I think it is definitely cool. Um, so we'll watch a few more example here. So this is what I was mentioning about Grok Heavy earlier. So they also released Grok Heavy. So if you don't know, essentially what that is, is uh, instead of one model running of Grok 4, they have 10 running in tandem at the same time. So 10 different versions of Grok 4 trying to solve the same problem. They all communicate with each other to come up to the best possible solution and then move forward. I think O3 is doing something similar to that, um, but that is interesting to see. So let's watch this right now. For yourself. Um, and the, the, with the Grok4 Heavy, what, what it does is it spawns multiple agents in parallel, and 
uh, all of those agents do, do work independently, and then they compare their work, and they, they decide which one, like it's like a study group. Um, and it's, it's not as simple as a majority vote, because uh, often only one of the agents actually figures out the trick, or figures out the solution. Um, and, 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 but once they share the, the trick or, or, or figure out what, what the tr real nature of the problem is, they share that uh, solution with the other agents. Yeah. And then they compare, they essentially compare notes and then, and, and then yield, a, uh, yield an answer. So essentially, like I said, they run in tandem. They try to solve the same problem. A lot of times only one will do it. They'll share notes and then they'll move forward with the solution. So pretty cool. This is what I was mentioning about ArcAGI. Look at the massive leap between Cloud Opus 4, which is the next best model here in this test, at around 9% all the way to over 16%. Huge, huge jump there. So that was that's big for their team. Really, really big. Um, you know, Elon's saying that it's better than every PhD in the world at every subject. Big claim there for sure. Um, and then the other big thing is that they're actually releasing a video model for Grok, trained on 100,000 GPUs. Um, really, really cool. So I, I, I would love to see a video model come out of Grok. I love all the video model competition. I think we need more of it. Um, obviously, VO3 is winning right now, uh, along with Hilo, but very, very cool to see that. Um, and then they also did like a vending machine test here uh, where it actually outperformed all the other models there. So pretty cool. A few other examples. Um, this guy, McKay Wrigley, does a lot of cool examples on X as well. Uh, he's a pretty good follow. And he actually does um, a test here where he asks it to do a 3D animation where it says, hello world, I am Grok, with a bunch of people running to make this visualization. And this was like so pretty cool to see, like all these people running around to, to uh, you know, like flash mob style here to like come together and actually make these, uh, these different animations. So pretty cool to see. Uh, this guy took a screenshot from a SpaceX conference and actually had it recreate the uh, the actual dynamics from this screenshot uh, for whatever this is, like, like an orbit or something. Pretty cool stuff there. This guy, uh, he, he works for Replit, so he's obviously promoting Replit, but he shows a two-minute tutorial on how to make an app uh, with Grok 4 in Replit, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, this is a 3D simulation of a black hole in 3JS. You always see a ton of this stuff when a new model comes out, like 3D graphic simulation. So the Grok logo is actually supposed to be like a black hole. So I think that's probably one of the things he's noting here, like how a black hole looks. So it's pretty cool to see that as well. I thought this was cool. Um, somebody used Grok 4 to create the Grok 4 CLI. So uh, if you have, have heard of Claude Code, essentially it's a CLI to run Claude models to write code. Uh, and so this guy basically made a Grok 4 version of that using Grok 4. Um, so pretty cool there. And this is open source. I can share that. If you want to see that or you want that link, just drop a comment and I'll, and I'll go ahead and provide that for you. Another guy building Flappy Bird here. Uh, we don't need to see that. I already showed you what that looks like when I did my example. Um, somebody asked Grok to describe itself and it gave this prompt, which they put into VO3, I believe, or Hilo, uh, and, and produced this beautiful uh, video here. Pretty cool stuff. Um, this guy used it to create a, a bunch of agents to do a team of agents. Um, this guy works for X, Dan Kettlebell. Um, Kettlebell Dan, I should say, and he, he actually built like a, a 3D um, exercise of this, uh, of this math problem, Euler's identity, which, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, if you see, like he didn't show the video of how this works, but he animated it all the way to Pi. So I thought that was pretty cool. So some really cool stuff coming out of Grok. I'm really, really impressed. Uh, can't wait to see what's next. I know he, Elon's already said they're going to make a bunch of improvements to this model. I can't wait to see that and test those out myself. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more AI content as well.